Hello there, YouTube. Today, I'm gonna to be bleeding air out of my baseboard radiators in my mid-century home. Now, I'm making this video because I haven't found any instruction, forum, or video which was specifically applicable to my situation, so hopefully this will help you as well. So first things first, I've got these base rays made by Burnham. They were really popular back in the 50s, 60s, perhaps even 70s, and they are solid cast iron. So I'm sure you've seen the following procedure where they tell you, okay, turn off the boiler, let it cool off, attach a garden hose to this drain valve here, shut the return valve off, take a garden hose and route it to a drain or all the way outside. You know, open it up. This is your pressure reducing valve. When you open it, it'll put that high city pressure into your system and it will push everything out through your pipes, out the garden hose, and you're good to go. Well, it didn't freaking work for me, so let's go into a little more detail. For starters, before you fill your system back up with water, if you drained it for whatever reason, uh, you need to make sure that your expansion tank is set at the proper PSI and that your expansion tank works in the first place. So you know it works because it'll be rock solid up here. You can hear it and down here, it should feel almost hollow. And when your system is empty, you can unscrew this cap here and just put a regular pressure gauge here on, on the bottom of this nipple and it should read roughly 12 PSI. It should match whatever your pressure reducing valve is set to. Now, if this thing is done for, the rubber membrane inside will have ruptured and you'll have water spilling out at the bottom here. Like, if I do this, then water will come spurting out. Now, I've got a few droplets of water, but nothing that would indicate to me that this thing is full. So I think this thing works. Number two, you're gonna have an air release valve somewhere here at the top. Now these things can get clogged, so take it off here. Make sure that this thing is nice and clean and not corroded. So this is a little, this thing lets water pass through under it and then air passes over it and out this little valve here at the top. And make sure that it's not sealed tight, this cap here at the top, it has to be a little loose. That's one thing. And I don't know if you caught it earlier, but my system was way over pressurized. It was at like 20 PSI. I'm now draining a bit of the water and some of the pressure out. I do have air in my system, so that's what I'm trying to take care of right now. A regular system, which only has, you know, a boiler in the basement or on the sink and a floor which it feeds, if it has only one floor of heat, it should be at about 12 to 15 PSI. Two floors, about 18 PSI. And if it exceeds the pressure, this uh, pressure blow-off valve is just gonna dump water onto your floor. If it exceeds 30 PSI, that's to protect your boiler. And that's exactly what keeps happening with mine. I have air, the air is uh, expanding as it heats up. This pressure climbs and eventually I get water in the bucket. And if I'm really not paying attention, I get water on my floor. Now we're going to bleed the air out of the baseboards. Now, I couldn't find this information anywhere for whatever reason, maybe because it's so obvious and maybe I'm not observant, but if you open this up, you should find bleed valves on every one of these if they were installed properly. So here is the water intake, and for some reason I was looking for a bleed valve to be on here, but it's not. So this is the water intake. If you go to the opposite end, it's also gonna have this cover here. Open that up, and there it is. It's not gonna be there at the bottom, not at the elbow joint, it's here. That's just a flathead screw, and that's where you bleed the air out. So what you're gonna need for this part, um, towel, container, little stubby flathead screwdriver. I still can't really get it in here, so I'm gonna need to take off this. There's a little um, wing screw here, or whatever you wanna call it. It's kind of rusty, so I'm gonna use needle nose pliers to break it, try to break it loose. All right, totally glossed over this. There's a little 
flathead screw holding it to the wall, so I'm gonna remove that. All right, that's out of the way. Let's bleed some air, shall we? Probably gonna need this towel at a minimum. So you can hear the air escaping and we're gonna keep it open for as long as this thing needs to let all that air out. Once you start seeing water, that's when you know to shut it off or close it back up again. All right, that took like a solid minute of air just rushing out and then finally it started spurting water. So now, I get to shut this thing off, wipe down the walls here, and I'm moving on to the next radiator. This older style radiator next to the door also has a bleeder valve. Same procedure here. Flathead screwdriver, let the air out, close it. Here's a little lesson in trickery. I was starting to get sick of having to remove this cover every time because there's a lot of radiators to go through so I grab my Leatherman which I can angle and I can I can do this without having to take any of them off which is great all right I have done every radiator and I'm gonna hit the switch let it heat up for a while and then I'm gonna go around the radiators again and release any excess air if it comes to it so and that's how you bleed air out of a base ray baseboard system, although it should really apply to every baseboard system. Thank you for watching. I hope this has helped. Please like and subscribe.